and welcome to the Tried It podcast, where we discuss all things from millennial struggles to relationships and love and everything in between. I'm Maya. I'm Jade. And I'm Kadisha. And we have a very special guest with us today. Hello. <laughs> I love That's how quick cute. they got on it. That's super cute. Kipola Waikilongo, that's my full name. I'm from Canada, Montreal. Yes, I and can't believe that you're here. Yes. All the way from Canada. Uh, it's actually like it's in the spring of the moment. Like I'm very spontaneous. on the moment. Yeah, spontaneous person. And just like on Monday, I was like, you know, I need to get out of here. So oh my gosh. London has always been like my dream trip. Mm. Have you just, been before? No, first time. Really? First time. I've, and you came by yourself? I came by myself. I and you're achieving so much meeting yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Like um, the last time I did a trip on myself, it was on, for Miami and I had an amazing time. And I really feel like when you travel, yeah. it's interesting to do it on your own because you're just like on your own yeah. time. You know? so like it's such a growth. In growing May, I went experience. to New York by myself. Okay. For was my it your birthday. first time? It was my first time to America. Okay. And it was my first time to New York. So yeah, it was, I had a great time. I had like yeah. the best time. New York is really like, nice. I, I can't imagine it being as great if I was with somebody else. No, mm. it's totally it's, different. Yeah. Because then just, you just decide what you, ever you want to do at mm-hmm, that moment, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if you guys like don't have the same vibe with your friend, yeah, you know, totally. it can be very tricky. Yeah, and true. I feel like when you go traveling with someone, it's kind of tricky. You have to, it has to be someone that you get on with really well. Otherwise it can always be like the problems that you want to do different things. So Definitely. going on your own, you just know like mm-hmm. your vibe depends on yourself. So. Mm-hmm. Mm. And, and I feel like you do more in that time. Yeah, it's totally. True. Yeah. And yeah. how did you find us? I found you guys actually on Instagram. So I have like a lot of people who find me on Instagram actually. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to London. I love podcasts in general. Like I don't I know why like, I didn't think of that. Yeah, well, it's. Oh, yeah. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Well, she did do Wendy Williams. She went to Wendy Oh, you went? I was oh, my God. How was it? It was great. <laughs> Love you, Must Wendy. Do. No, do you know what? When, Wendy's really, really nice in person. Okay. I was not expecting Aww. that, but I think just like TV shows in general, when you're in the audience, you see that it's it's not the same being in the audience. Like, yeah, it's better no, to watch it's totally it different. on yeah, the TV because the, the experience is just very like <sighs> yeah, yeah, like proper stage, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, and I guess proper. they have like stops, right? So they don't like stops. Just and I find that um, I don't know if you've seen any TV here, but American TV is adverts with a bit of TV, mm. whereas here it's TV with a bit of adverts. Mm. So in on like the Wendy show, she would literally say like four lines, and then we're going to a break. Oh, okay. And I was like, what what <laughs> literally, yeah. yeah. And then I think they just record it like that, stop, start, and then they piece it together to put it on the TV. Yeah. So yeah. But why wouldn't they just though? record the whole thing and then after add, like edit mm. their breaks in? Because it's live. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Fair. Uh, that makes live. sense actually. Yeah. Mm. Just to make sure there's like no mistakes. Yeah. But, or as least as possible, yeah. I guess. Mm. But yeah, I found you guys on Instagram. That's I was like, awesome. okay, a bunch of girls totally up my alley. Oh my I listened God. to a few <gasps> podcasts. So I was like, okay, Love it's it. exactly. And like I have one coming up in that. Well, we've got <laughs> listeners in Canada. That's what I'm asking. You'll be finding us from across the world. Instagram. And you're coming through. Yes. Well, I mean, yeah, it's this is kind of how it starts, right? And like I yeah. said, I had a bunch of people holler at me on Instagram for like some yeah. projects here and there. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to London. Mm-hmm. Why not? 100%. Oh, I'm yeah. a big Gosh. believer in Instagram's use in that way. Like I do well, just social media, media, and, media yeah. in general. Totally. I feel like that's the whole purpose to be mm. able to connect yeah. with like just everyone. Yeah. Right? yeah. So, uh, yeah. That's, oh, that's we're so honoured, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Yes, it is. <laughs> Obviously, today's a pick and mix episode. Should we explain a little bit about what you do and stuff? Yeah, just just a little bit. Well, I could do briefly. Brief like, buyer. Brief buyer. So yeah. basically, I'm a full-time real estate agent there in Montreal. Mm-hmm. So I do that on my own account. So I'm totally self-employed, 100% on commission. Oh my so gosh. it's been like three years uh, now, which is actually really interesting. So I learn a lot every day. And my days are never the same. So that's why I really like that. Mm-hmm. And then that permits me to do like projects on the side, right? Because like mm-hmm. I'm super flexible. I can mm. just like re- leave whatever, which yeah. is here the proof. <laughs> I'm here London. Um, and I also did PR, uh, like a PR course in mm-hmm. um, in Toronto actually, which is in Ontario there in Canada. Um, so I dip and dabble in some projects here and there. Whatever speaks to me at that moment, I just do it and then we go from there. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, any gosh, any brushes with Drake? No, no. <laughs> just have to ask. I know you're always thinking it. It's so Canada. funny that like uh, everywhere in the planet that you go, like the only, only person only you guys yeah. refer to, is, like, but I totally understand. Justin right? Bieber. I'll be fair. <laughs> yeah. See, that's actually Liza with Lopez. Uh-huh. It's a fitness lady. Who? No. no. Moving on. <laughs> too far. Too far. So I'm totally not into fitness. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that's a shot. <laughs> All right. Who's first? Okay, um, so mm-hmm. these two are going to go. Okay. And instead of me speaking, you're going to have mine, yeah? 
Okay. Yeah. Okay, I guess it's me. (laughs) (laughs) So I want to speak about headphones. Okay. Now I know this sounds a bit, oh, what's she playing at? But you'll soon see. (laughs) So obviously I've been banging on about this book I've been reading, Digital Minimalism. Yeah, yeah. It's taken me quite some time to get through because it's quite boring. But it is also very good. Thank you. So is the writer. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Basically, something that really struck me was how uh, the book speaks about how we were on a we were on a way for like, you know, we Mark Zuckerberg done the whole Facebook thing, Steve Jobs, Apple, iPhone, everything was going in that direction. However, it wasn't actually the purpose or the goal of Zuckerberg or Jobs to make these things as addictive as they are. That sort of just got lost. Like it just became like that. And both those two people don't actually engage in their their products as you would think they would. You'd mm-hmm. think like if you go to Steve Jobs' house, like the bloody toilet paper will be Apple, but he's just not, he mm-hmm. doesn't. He even said in one press release that he never meant for it to get this bad. Isn't Steve Jobs dead? Um, yeah, but I don't think it was recent. He oh, said it at some oh. point. Yeah, I don't know if he is dead as well, but he, he said is. it at some point. Oh, okay, thank He's you. Dead. Wow. Right. Oh, God, wishing death on people. <laughs> <laughs> and um, they, the other thing is as well, people who work for Facebook and um, uh, Instagram and all these kind of places, mm. there was a big thing of a guy from Silicon Valley actually quit, and he did a huge outburst to the press, and he was just like, "It's horrible what goes on in there. It's basically like a sweatshop. Like they literally, their only aim is to make things more addictive. You're given KPIs, which is make the colors brighter, pick, mm. pick on people's things more, make them mm. more like they can't even think without this, and it's winning. Obviously, it's happening. Mm-hmm. But what's happening as well is we're naturally our human intuition is kicking in, and we are all taking a step back more and more. Like, like I think like even if we don't do it, we're all conscious that we shouldn't be on our phones as much. We shouldn't be doing this. Maybe don't look at your phone before bed. Like these are thoughts that we have. So so many people, people, and he did a, like a survey of like the people that are most up there, the people that have got the most financial independence. Most of them live like on a farm with nothing around them, no cell mm-hmm. phone, no anything, mm-hmm. because they get to that point and they're like, just I can realize this isn't good enough. This isn't good for me. Mm-hmm. And then there's this whole debate about how, which is what we were saying, social media is so good for networking, for this, for that, but how much work do you actually get done whilst it's there as a distraction i'm waiting for the headphones to come in yeah oh, right wow. so <laughs> regarding the headphones thank you bringing it back <laughs> they said like okay you can we can work with the whole social media thing we can work with the production of everything else but headphones came in and that changed the game because now we don't even have to speak to each other anymore we are we're seeing a person coming towards us all we have to do is put our headphones in we don't have to chat to them it's mm. the biggest block you can think of and then i started thinking about me and i remember it doesn't block enough for me you know i'm in the lunchroom <laughs> two headphones in and they'll tap you <laughs> Kadisha, <laughs> oh, did you see that on TV yesterday? I thought you were just... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so if you don't feel the same way, um, I distinctly remember once being on holiday and like I said on previous episodes, like we never had like Xbox or Sky or anything that was that far in technology at the time we were in. Mm. So we were always still kept a bit behind, I think. And I, I don't think my parents did that on purpose. I think they're just stingy. But I think it did have the effect on us where we were always a bit aware of technology mm. being a bit like, I was a bit scared of it. Like I still don't have it. We, we wasn't, it was different for us. Yeah. What about you? We're still talking about headphones here, right? We're, yes. talking, we're just like and technology, technology in general. I know. She, she, I, have, uh, I, feel, I was so scared. I was fully immersed in all technology, getting all the games. Yeah, Which we, is so ironic because you weren't even upgrading all the games, phone. consoles. Yeah. I thought maybe that's because I had so much. I was maybe. like, right, this yeah. is a problem. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> and I've always had headphones. And like, we had Game Boy, then we got the Nintendos, then we had the PlayStation 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah. Then we had I Sky, had then we had Cable, and we had computer, games, so. and we had, um, we had it all. The Game okay. Boys. Right. We had to share it, but we had it. Go on. No, no. I was just like thinking mm. while you were speaking, what, while you were speaking, we definitely had everything that you just named as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I do feel like if I do put my headphones on, I am like, don't talk to me vibe. Yeah. Um, do you feel rude doing it? Because that's what I was about to say. I suddenly remember being on holiday about 11 and I put my headphones in. I remember my parents just being like, oh, look at this. Logic. It is rude. Yeah, that's why it's like, a time and a place. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But I think that doesn't exist anymore. I think now we've got AirPods. <laughs> we can literally be actually accessorized the No, if I was at the so dinner much. table and someone was wearing a- AirPods, or whatever they're called, I'd be like, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Someone happens. did that the other day at dinner. I just have to say this story. We were at a birthday. <laughs> we were all in the bar talking, whatever. And this one girl was like, I don't like the music here. And he put his ear pods in. See I kid I you mean. not. And he just started listening to music for like this a happens. good half an hour. And I was okay. like, 
Headphones have opened the barrier what? for there to no longer be human connection and yeah. it's okay. I don't think it's headphones because headphones have always been around and headphones are, are, are used for a purpose, whether it be to listen to music because mm-hmm. people aren't putting in headphones and not listening to anything. I do that a lot. Okay, then that's that's you <laughs> as a person. Some people might I do actually, that. Yeah, but that's, that's you well. as a person. But She's right. If, but what you could also do is just ignore the person, just look past them. But it's them, a lot harder pretend. to do. Okay, but... Mm, uh, but it, was, it does give like don't talk to me vibes. Yeah. Mm, Without having to say anything. I mean, but I, I'm a person that always has headphones in. Like even at home, I wear headphones. Like I don't ever put the phone to my ear. Mm. And I, like if, if I've not got headphones in, it's not allowed to be complaining out loud. Um, so whether I'm traveling any anytime I'm traveling the short distance or long distance or wherever I'm going at work, I have head for, my AirPods in. But what but if I, I like wear a, one? What if at you're at my desk t- table, like with family? You know, <clears throat> no. Whenever I'm, if I'm meeting somebody, okay. like for example, I came here, I took my headphones out because I don't mm. need to have my headphones in. But um, if I'm like at work and I'm at my desk, I will have one AirPod in because when I'm not speaking to somebody, I'm listening to something. But then I'm still open to hear what you've got to say because I've only got one in. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But um, when I need my... And I, I, mean, I like to listen to my things loud as well. So I do need two in. Um, but if somebody's coming to speak to me, I will just press um, pause. Mm. But don't but you, you think still have that, in that is pause. kind of saying, I'm like, yeah, because I Because when you finish talk. talking, I'm getting back I, to what I, I was doing. I understand why, but yeah. do you not feel that to that person? It's just like, hurry up. You're on, you're on a clock now. I feel like my face will do that. Yeah. <laughs> my, <laughs> I feel like my face will do that rather than me yeah. like taking you my headphone like, out. Yeah. yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I think, I, I agree. I do think that it encourages antisocial behaviour. I think that, I mean, even, I mean, it's proof. I was thinking kind of like, is it true? Do people do that? But when I thought about the other day when someone literally put them on at mm-hmm. the table, like I didn't think that was possible. And I think even, especially like, maybe our generation was a generation where as we were growing up, maybe people adopted the, like um, technology later on in life, but especially people that are having it from. Born I mean, it. my nephew, he wants AirPods. He's asking for AirPods now, and if mm. he had them, boy, I With know he'd him. be having it at the table. Literally. He'd be having them ra- like there. Like he wouldn't be talking to anybody. Mm. So I mean, I definitely think that it encourages like antisocial behavior. Yeah. I mean, if I see someone with if it, like if I needed help for something, or if I was at an event or whenever, if there's someone with earphones in or something, I'm not going to talk to them because I'm going to think they don't want to. You know, what I mean, they're busy. Like they're not ready to be here me right mm. now so yeah I definitely think I, I agree um because this is really interesting actually mm. it's a good good conversation Thank topic you. and you all didn't know where it was going yeah because <laughs> I mean, like you have one. to think like on the fly but mm-hmm. you know what I feel like um especially nowadays I feel like what you said you're like kind of always connected right mm. you were saying okay you know what I'm ready to answer your question but mm. then I'll go back to whatever I was listening mm. I feel like sometimes it is important to be able to just like put your phone and yeah. whatever you're connected to aside and just live in the moment which is what we don't necessarily do a lot nowadays right mm. so I feel like it is kind of a small issue that but we is don't it the really... phone or is it the headphones I feel like it's both because mm. like she's saying the fact that you do have your headphones on you said it but what if I didn't have headphones in then and I was just sat here like this on my phone? Would you would you still think, let me interrupt what she's doing? Because I look busy. Yeah, I've I got two hands on the phone. I don't I'm looking into my skin. Because yeah. I don't feel like, because yeah, you're looking down, but your ears are still hearing what's going on. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So it's like, I could just be like, Kadisha. And you'd be like, oh yeah. Do you know what I mean? Whereas if you headphones, you're like... But then what if I what if I don't like <laughs> what if I don't put the phone down? Like do you know what I mean? Like if it's still oh, in my yeah, face. Oh yeah, then I would be like what the I hell? wouldn't like it, but I'm still going to feel more but I could okay still, to approach you. But I could still respond if you cuz if I've got two headphones in, if you tap me and I take one out and talk to you, mm. um first of all I wouldn't be sat here with two headphones in with, if you was talking anyway, but if you was to tap me and say something and I took it out, I would engage in that conversation. The same way I would if I was on my phone. Mm-hmm. Well, I think she's meaning like how it looks to the other person more than how you feel about mm. it, right? Well, so I, you, if I had earmuffs on, nah, that's different because that's for a purpose. That's like okay, just I, which I know. I know headphones. I know, but <laughs> I still just feel like. Headphones are a purpose we've created because if we didn't have them, we could still talk on the phone. We could still do it. You said you use them because you don't want to hold the phone up or you don't want to this, you want to listen yeah, to music. But for me, I'm just like, oh, we've always had them though. So it's just people. If it's a case, because we can make excuses for anything then. Do you know what I mean? You're saying that. Yeah, but I just feel like the headphones 
especially with the whole Apple I'm proper movement. defending my AirPods. I'm, I'm like, right. you are not, I'm not going to talk them. bad about I'm not my AirPods. Them. You can keep them, they're yours. All I'm saying is, I personally. Defending them like I designed them. <laughs> the new Steve Jobs here. She I could be at Apple, be like, please send us yeah. some. <laughs> I personally have, obviously, since we're reading this, become more conscious of mm-hmm. it. And um, I don't want to use my headphones as much so even like today in the gym which like you know I don't really like music anyway so it's not a biggie for me to not use them but I always listen in the gym because I'm like I need this to help me through Mm. and today I didn't and I know this can sound a bit you know but by not listening and I was doing my dips and my pull-ups and stuff I really felt like I was more connected to my body Mm. because I'm thinking about what I'm doing when I'm listening to my hair like in a bubble I'm in a bubble Mm -hmm. I'm just using the music and the tempo to get me through I'm not really thinking about doing it and I feel like I really got more from the the gym though far away but yeah it was there mm. it's different though and I totally get where you're coming from mm. it is a bubble it's like eating a meal when you're not watching something you're just sitting and enjoying the meal and eating it but I never thought about it that way mm. but it totally makes sense yeah. well to me mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. not to Khadija mm. no, <laughs> no when I'm listening to my things I can zone out and I know what you mean like you'll be listening to something and then you'll look up and you'll be like, oh, I'm here already. Like, mm. if you was travelling or mm. something, that, that can happen. And that's good in a way. Like, yeah. sometimes you love but that. But I can't stand the music that plays in the gym. Yeah. And do you know what, as well, <laughs> though? Like, another point, you know, like how you said, like, my face would do that anyway if mm. I wasn't. I just feel like with the the excuse of headphones and, like, the visual block it provides, because I want to use headphones and then I'm just like, okay, cool, I'm not going to bother her. That's made us less, not able, but less... Um, we don't feel as required to give people respect. <laughs> Literally, we don't feel like we have to make small talk because mm. we know if I really, Hate really want to, talk. I can just... And exactly. <laughs> and then I do... I'm Not that I'm saying that I'm small not good talk at it is either. needed, but I'm just saying it used to be a requirement and it used to be part of just human etiquette yeah. and we just don't we have it We used to be forced to actually mm. have to speak and deal with people yeah. and we don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. Mm. Which is, is kind a of a beautiful thing. thing. It, it is awesome. a beautiful <laughs> thing. It is a beautiful thing on the one hand, but then what about people who are already a bit anxious and that already wouldn't go the extra mile and now this is just playing into that worse? It makes it easier to just stay within yourself and just... Really yeah. become, I, like, I, I hear all points of view. I just want to bring it to the table yeah. and see what mm. everyone's thinking. And I think we've talked like that to death. That. You definitely give me Tell us what thought. you think. Yeah, get involved. Oh, yeah. Mm. I Send us a DM. I was like, tweet oh, us. Running now. Don't go for Kadisha's <laughs> AirPods, please. <laughs> no, don't. Unless you want to send me some of those new ones, <laughs> I won't say no. All right. So my top two, I've spoken about this before, but right now I work in property development and I'm trying to get in there. I'm trying to make it with the big dogs. Obviously it's going to take a while. Um, but even I was going to do a master's in real estate and the statistics are like so clear that it is such a male dominated industry. Like even when I was applying to like do the master's, there was, it was like 80% male and like 20% female. So they have like special scholarships to get women into the industry and everything. And uh, as I'm working with my dad, a lot of times it's old white men as well. So I found, I find it very hard to be taken seriously. Sometimes, you know, I have to do stuff like go and drop off some keys or pick up some keys or go to the council and sort something out. And I get a lot of the time like, oh, you're right, love. Or like, you're right, honey. Like, how can I help you? Just very unprofessional kind of. You're um, waiting for someone to come and pick you up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, you're right. And especially, I think it is hard because especially because I do work with my dad. A lot of time they'll be like, are you Paul's daughter? Like, oh, and like, it's just so, mm. like, I just feel like I'm just like, oh God. Like, I'm just a little girl in this freaking especially because I'm young as well so it's like multiple things and being a woman in the industry is definitely something that I am concerned about and I think it's something that a lot of women across multiple industries can understand as well like engineering and finance like these are all industries where women Mm. are having to like really fight their way up there so as a woman in real estate obviously you're from Canada so I just wanted to hear your perspective on it I'm just really interested to see if it's different in different countries and like what your experience is yeah for sure well first when I started to do my course, like I said, I was like a really spontaneous person. I decided I was going to be a real estate agent. And then like two weeks after I was doing my course. Oh, wow. right? So when I started my classes, basically, like, for example, it was like 20 people. We were maybe three under the age of 30. Mm. So it was like mostly, I would say, 45 and up. Okay. And amongst those people, maybe three. Three quarters were men and then the Mm. rest were women. So I definitely get where you're coming from. And I definitely get those as well. So all the comments I hear when I'm doing transactions is like, oh, like you probably don't know this because you don't have that much experience. Mm. You probably don't know this because you're young. You probably... Just expecting you not to know. A hundred percent. Yeah. But you know what? 
it's kind of something I feel like we kind of have to deal with at the moment. However, there are a lot of women doing big things mm. now mm. more. Mm-hmm. And we're just moving forward. So, but I definitely get where you're coming yeah. from. And there definitely is that, especially like in all, all those, those jobs that you named. But how do you like deal with it? Do you ever just like, do you ever say anything back? Or like, do you just kind of take it on the chin and just like, I'm take it. Now I'm going to show you. <laughs> yeah. As much as I would love to like defend myself I just feel like when you do it kind of tends to get worse Mm, and you're like feeding the person's bad energy so the only thing that I promised obviously at the beginning was a little nerve-wracking and like you're not sure of yourself when you're beginning right Mm. so you're like starting not only five steps behind but with like nerves but now you know what I just totally decided to just like let go and do me and then whoever can't deal with it you can't deal with it Mm. that's on that's your bad yeah um Okay. Yeah. No. It's nice to hear that it's like a worldwide thing. I think it's it's happening in multiple countries because yeah. I sometimes I wonder like is it just here or like no. is it something that's going on everywhere? So it is nice to know. But have you guys ever experienced like feeling being made to feel like because you're a woman that you're not as worthy as the men in the workplace? I feel like because it happened with you, Kadisha, because you work in the NHS. So I feel like you know I'd like to think that it's kind of good and it has respect. No, I mean, you'd like to think that, you know, the the giant people. (laughs) Well, I mean, even just today. So today was my first day back at work Mm. since being ill. And um, I was walking there's big on flu jab and stuff. And like, yeah, so this, this new that. woman who's just started, she is like quite high up in, um, with the execs. And she was doing like a walk around, probably just like asking people, have you had your flu jab? Have you had your flu jab? And she caught me as I was walking back to my office from um, an induction. And she was like, have you had your flu jab? And I was literally holding the door open for her to walk past and walk out. And mm-hmm. she caught me at the door and I was like, I have not. And then we stood there talking for a time. And the way she was talking to me, mm. like, because she's an older white woman. And the way she was talking to me was like, yeah, well, you don't think that you need to do it to protect the patients on the wards? And I was like, I don't work on the ward. I work in mm. IT. And they were like, okay, well, what about when you're walking through all of the clinical areas? And she's probably like looking oh at me. And, and, and I was like, well, I don't walk through the clinical areas. She's like, I've just caught you walking through the clinical areas now. I'm oh, like, no, I'm just walking through so a corridor. Annoying. I haven't been in any wards. I'm just walking through a corridor. And you um, don't stop all the patients to ask them if they've had flu jabs. So why are you harassing me? Mm. But it's just the way she was talking to me. Yeah. It's like she wanted me to like rage out and punch yeah. in the face or something. She's talking <laughs> to you, like looking down on you. Like. I doubt that was what she wanted, I'll be honest. That's the way she was looking. But yeah, but yeah and I just was, I went back to my office and I was like... I don't need this on my first morning back. Yeah. I really don't. But um, like little passive aggressive things like that happen mm. in, in the workplace for sure. And there's a big movement, not just for like equality and like disability and all of that stuff, but for like BAME as well. And then yeah. and then when you're BAME. You no, I black, was going to ask. Asian, minority. Okay, black. yeah. 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 Um, so when you're that and woman and on top of all of the other things you, you just get like lower and lower down the chain mm-hmm. so because I'm pretty sure if I was like walking with my manager she wouldn't have spoke to my manager like mm-hmm. that do you know what I mean mm-hmm. my managers are also an older white woman so yeah, yeah it's just it, you, I, I think it you get it everywhere more. to be fair and, and especially if you're like in a position where they just don't believe that you should be mm-hmm. it's, it's like their own insecurities coming out where they feel like they have to like mm-hmm. 100%. shit on you 100% yeah, I feel like that's especially because I'm young. I feel like there's going to be mm. a lot of that. Like, people don't want to think that you could know. Or I, even I'm hearing that a lot as well from my friends. Mm. Like, they're starting at, you know, a company. A lot of times as well, someone, if they have a degree versus someone that's worked for the experience. Yeah. And now there's someone that's coming with a degree with a degree, and that they don't have necessarily that experience. And then there's kind of that competition of someone that has the experience thinking like well you know you don't know more than me or feeling maybe insecure that like Mm. you have you know some knowledge or new uh, idea about new technology or something that they haven't had that experience to learn yet so I feel like it's definitely something that everyone faces Mm. what have you have you oh yeah loads like especially because you're in the fitness industry (laughs) you must get it on the daily (laughs) on my way in (laughs) no yeah of course like that was part of the reason I wanted to be doing I wanted to be a female only Mm. PT because I distinctly remember my like 
being I was young, I was 18, like a pretty girl in a fitness in, in a fitness gym, like it it was oh. a myth. <laughs> and I remember I was at the like on the, on the desk on like my first few days, my first few weeks, and I was just like trying to speak to everyone to show who I am and mm. get your presence around the gym and all that shit. And then a guy walked in and he was like, Yes, babe, and I like, started rubbing oh, his hands oh, as gosh. a member. And what was most upsetting was that like my manager saw this happen, mm. and because this was a high paying customer. There wasn't anything of it. It was just like, yeah, just let him through, let him through, sir. And like, and then he was just, and then he was like having a laugh and a joke with my manager. He's like, yeah, I'd love, I'd love her to show me some stretches. Do you know what I mean? Oh, and the manager was gosh. just like, oh, Maya, are you free? Like it was oh. literally, yeah. It, because the thing is, like you said, they don't, they don't want you to be in a position like mm. that. They don't think you have the right to be. Fitness mm. anyway is seen as very like anyone can get in. So what have you really done to deserve to be here? Mm. In that kind of industry, is very like catty as well, especially amongst the women. Everyone's trying to get up. It's a competition. You're in a competition with the people that you work with. So if you don't bag that client, uh, the girl over there who's a PT, True. who's got yeah. her bum out, is probably going to yeah. give him some stretches. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's sad, but it's true. Yeah. And like, I remember there was, and even like the way that the boys, who'd be my fellow colleagues, would treat the women in the gym. Mm. And you'd see them walking in and you'd be like, I'm going to offer some yeah yeah don't charge her of course I don't charge her like they wouldn't oh, even charge God. for PT but their PT would be just standing behind her when she does a squat and like that shit happens like, did you people... do anything about that situation or? at the time I was young I was very young and I remember I wanted to do something but then one thing happened and I was just like yeah this is all mad I remember I think I've said this before but I was um I was talking to one of my managers and he said uh yeah you're hot and you're sexy but if you um got naked right now I wouldn't fuck you I wouldn't fuck you I'll take a picture I'd take a picture and I'll send it to you and I'd be like, this is why you're going to hit Target this month. What and I was 18 and I just remember fuck. being like... You definitely haven't said that before. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. yeah. And, I, and at the time, I didn't think that was sexual harassment. I didn't think mm. that was anything bad. I just thought that was banter because what that's the how hell? these used to talk. My manager shouldn't even be saying the word fuck to me. Mm. Of course. Just, but do you know what? In a fitness industry, like I said, because it's non-professional, mm. it is not like legal or medical or... Yeah. property right. is, it's like people do you know mm. what I mean so you can pass pretty much anything off as people that's just banter that's just how it is here that's just this that's just that and it was just like yeah so from then I was like yeah yeah okay. I re-. and then I got a female manager and I was like okay things are better now and she was even like do you want to sort your hair out? Do you, you want to wear a tight top? Oh, wow. Do you want to? She, she told me to start wearing thongs. She was like, I think you should start wearing thongs. Oh my thongs gosh. Because it shows through your thing and it's going to look a bit better. And you're a pretty girl. You're a pretty girl. Like that, that would be their cover oh up. They'd, be, they'd always be like, you're a pretty girl though. And I, I went to her once and I was like, this guy said, that she was like, you're a pretty girl. Oh <laughs> my gosh. Like, yeah, girl. It's super sad because I feel like we grow up thinking that we have totally. to let these yeah. things slide. Totally. All the time. People say that to me as well. Like when I was like first starting out in real estate and I was saying, I was bringing this up to my dad and about mm. like, oh, but you know, I'm a woman in real estate. So I'm, I'm scared. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know if this is the path I should take. And even like all of my fa- family, especially like the older people in my family, they were like, yeah, but you're a pretty girl. Like use that to your advantage. You know, mm-hmm. you can, you know, men are, you can just get your way, you know, yeah, if you're a pretty yeah. girl. I was like, I don't want to use, like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I should no. have to. Like, what the hell? It's yeah. just mad that we're expected as women to, like, yeah. use this as something that could get us further when it's like, we are so much more than the way we look. Like, we shouldn't have to rely on that mm-hmm. to get anywhere. And this came up in my brunch that I did in Laguna Beach. That we were speaking about, like, the glass ceiling effect. And obviously, they're all very successful women to be living there and living the mm-hmm. life they do. And one woman said that she works in, like, art and stuff. And she said she doesn't think it's a coincidence that at the top it's like white men old white men but the other percentage that's just as high as that or or closest to that is lesbian women and she's like why is that is it because they are just like they're numb to all of the sexual harassment they get is it because they don't enter into it do we like pander to it a bit more do you know what i mean i don't know Mm. i i don't have the answers Mm. but i was just thinking that is interesting like it was Mm. something that was Maybe opinion? because like men can't see them as like any more as but maybe thought, as sexual because surely not. that would make men less okay about them rising. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. then maybe not. Maybe that's our maybe that's our perception. Yeah. Maybe we're so indoctrinated to think we've got to use our beauty or our whatever mm. that we think there's actually no way yeah, we can. Yeah. So when we see someone has, we're like, oh, it must be. But we mm. have to. I don't know. I honestly don't know. But I just think this is. Yes, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. But yeah, I just think this is such a good point. Important topic to talk about all the time and just remind ourselves of it because even on my Instagram, I always post like, just post stuff to raise, just to raise awareness. Just generally, if I see a post about like feminism or like women in business or something like that, like I'll post it up and you wouldn't believe the amount of messages I get from like men that are like, but 
but yeah. like you know it, that doesn't Speaking make any butt. sense or like mm, but women are da, 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 but what if she wanted it like what, what if, if it was da, 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 da. the other way around I hate yes, that shit yes it's I wouldn't be able to say that if it was the other way around and I was like well actually you could like <laughs> but yeah so I really just feel like it's something we should talk about all the time like, and I don't think we could talk about it enough because it's just still people clearly don't get it quick question <laughs> do you think what Cardi B did was bad what should you do Jogging and um, oh my god! I mean, it's obviously not right. We're we're just not even getting into that right now. You know how I feel about it. I think it was. What is your pick? (laughs) Yeah. Okay, so I was actually thinking about this on my way here. Okay. Undecided on my stance on this one. Um. So my question was: Do you guys think it's still a woman's role in the household? To upkeep the cleaning, oh, the cooking, oh. the taking care of her man. This was actually yeah, my we pick a recently. couple of weeks ago. Oh, really? Ago. You guys already yeah. discussed no, this? No, 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 but we'll do it again. Mine was, mine <laughs> we was, didn't get um, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine was, um, <laughs> word is slightly different. So I basically said, like, if a, should a man pay for everything if the woman does all of that? So yours is like, no, it's, you? is it our role? Yeah, like, is do you guys still role? feel like it's our role um, as a woman? Absolutely, motherfucking not. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Naturally, we can't argue, we can't deny the fact that women are more maternal, more agree, more yeah. Um, we we want our homes to be like homely and nice and tidy, and men just don't usually possess that. Mm-hmm. So naturally, we are just going to take on more. Of the, or if you're like anything like me, if you want it done properly, you'll do it yourself. So. I will be the one to be cleaning up because I know that it will get done properly and I know that I like it a certain way and it will get done. Um, so it will just become my role. But that's not because I'm a woman. It's just because I feel like it, I'm me. Okay. Like I feel like if I was a man, I'd be the same because okay. it's me. How about the cooking and the food? Like for the family? Um, again, I'm so fussy with food okay. that like I'm, if somebody cooks for me, even as my, she's always trying to feed me. And it's not that like, Oh really? Like, yeah. <laughs> and it's not that I don't trust her to, feed me but it's just like I'm just like you just I just don't want to risk yeah. not liking it and then being rude do you mm-hmm. know what I mean so imagine like your, your boy that you're with goes through all this effort and makes you such a nice meal and, and you, you can't like even it. swallow it <laughs> <laughs> that'd be horrible I, exactly whereas I know that I know that I like what I cook I know that you're gonna like what I cook so but obviously if he did cook well that would just be like a yeah, praise a Jesus plus. moment yeah <laughs> okay makes sense how about taking care of him what do you mean <laughs> Elaborate Like doing Doing the best <laughs> What does that involve <laughs> Like cooking food So he gets home When he gets home uh, Doing the cleaning yeah. and Just like yeah. Tidying up after him Oh my god So an Make example sure Of clean. what I said In the Thank last you, one Jane. as well I is think we got the idea <laughs> 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 the toilet clean Yeah I don't know He does a massive shit um, And then you gotta clean it up First of all yeah. no If you're grown yeah. No I'm not oh, I'm no. not looking after you Would you be turned yeah, off If you saw skid marks In your boyfriend's um yeah, because you're, <laughs> you're, you're a big man to be having skid yeah, that's marks weird, in your, man. In your what pants. Would you, you break up with him? <laughs> I'm not going to break up with him. Oh, so it's not I'm not 12, <laughs> but a conversation will be had yeah. for sure. What I don't want to see it again. What's going on, man? What's going on? <laughs> Otherwise, there's problems. Oh, God. <laughs> um, but yeah, like for me, like at the moment, I live by myself. So I, every, I have to clean every day. I have to cook every day. So if I'm doing this anyway, because I need to eat mm-hmm. and I'm home first, mm-hmm. why am I? Why would I cook for myself and not cook for you? Mm. That makes sense. Where if you're home, I would expect you to make sure that the okay. house is clean and tidy okay. before. But I don't think it's it's my role. But me, I just feel like in no matter what dynamic I'm in, I feel like it's always going to be more me. But that's just because that's how I am. Mm. Okay, that makes sense. Mm. Ideally, I would like to split it 50-50, but I know how possessive I am. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that makes total sense. Yeah. So you were saying I absolutely feel like, Yeah, for me, I just don't think so at all. I definitely <laughs> want to be someone who's like, working hard and working I'm probably gonna be working long hours so I don't see myself as that like I'll be working less than you necessarily or like you know what I mean the one that's at home the most or whatever mm-hmm. so I don't see myself in that housewife role I hate cooking like I, okay. I hate cooking I do it because I need to but if I can avoid it I'm avoiding it and like, I'm not fussy like I'll eat whatever so a lot, lot of time like, if I just can't be bothered I'll just do something quick and it might not even taste that great but like as long as I ate something yeah. and it was good for die. me then like, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah so I'm you know a lot of times they probably wouldn't want to eat what I'm eating anyway to be honest oh my gosh. A lot, unless they're not otherwise <laughs> and plus and Jay's just eating <laughs> mackerel out of the tin <laughs> oh, <laughs> not even but like even if sometimes I have a little stuff a lot of my family don't like that mm. do you know what I mean so I just feel like yeah, yeah. and I don't I, I'm not the cleanest person I'm, I'll be honest like mm-hmm. people that I've dated in the past have all been really clean and I've been the messy one okay. so I've had I have to like 
fix myself up to make sure that like I don't leave my clothes around. I hate hanging my clothes up and like oh it's just long. A lot of time I'll eat in my room, so I have like dishes, like oh cups of stuff. God. Obviously, I make Jade. sure I, I take them that. out. That's horrible. I have often, drinks, but not. <laughs> but like oh I will have. <laughs> <laughs> so so like, do it often. So like I'll eat in my room, and then the next day, like I take them out. But then like I'll be eating that day, and then the next morning I'll take them out. Oh. So like. <laughs> Oh That's for the whole night to ferment. Do you know what? Yeah, but I got- when I was at home and I was um, like <laughs> bed bound, that I was eating in my bed and this I was like, this is, is so wrong. But literally, I would finish yeah, I the, ba- the yeah, bowl and I'd put it on the side and I'd be like, nope, can't stay there. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then I've got to take it to I the kitchen. I do take it to the there. other side of my room, but I just leave it there. Oh my God. Other yeah. side and then of I your room. And then I take it in the morning. Okay. <laughs> when I go down. That's but yeah. So I think it's clear to say that that's just <laughs> not well, me. <laughs> do you feel like since you're going to be pulling up your weight financially, does he have to do those things? I mean, or? I I would like, I, this is the thing. See, I can't imagine, but I feel like once you have like a family situation, everything kind of changes. So mm-hmm. I'm not going to, I'm not necessarily considering that yet. But I would like someone that's driven and on their way to their career as well. So I would expect them to probably be doing the same thing, like working hard. Okay. Like, Please I don't necessarily that think that like one person has to be staying at home yet. I guess when you have a family, it's different. Does that mean that you're going to live? Separate, separately. No, we can live together, but we'll both be working hard, a long hours. So I if you're messy, can't. he's messy. Clean up. So I guess we lentils, just have to clean up after beans. ourselves. I, I'm, I definitely like. I'm finding it hard to clean up after myself. Let alone clean up after you as well. Let's just both clean up I after agree. ourselves. Clean up and after like, for sure. obviously, like you said, like if I get home first, I'm gonna cook food for myself. I'll probably see if what they want and like try and make it nice for something that they're gonna want as well. But yeah, it definitely wouldn't become like a regular thing. Like I'm always cooking dinner. Like hell no, we need to mm-hmm. at least be doing fifty mm-hmm. fifty. If not, I'm 70, 40, like, <laughs> <laughs> 70, 30, but yeah. Oh, How about me? Maya? So I'm very much 100% on the on the maternal thing and mm-hmm. the nurturing. Like I'm always trying to feed her and everyone I try and feed. Yeah. But my boyfriend is very similar to Kadisha in that he doesn't want to cook, eat what I cook. Okay. Because <laughs> he likes to do it himself. He knows what he likes. It's just what she said. Like it's like listening to him. I've even had like, like it actually upsets me because Aww. I wish I could, like I wish we could enjoy that together. But he's just like, babes, like, I'm just not going to like it. Mm. <laughs> he's like, I'm not going to like it. I find it hard to actually eat other people's food. Yeah. Yeah. I just can't do it. And like she said, is. he's like, I don't want to do that. And then, and then um, not Disappoint enjoy it. And, and yeah, yeah, it's heartbreak. It's really upsets me, but whatever. And I've said like, if we have kids, like, pff, I don't know what you're going to do. Cause I'm not having them watch that behavior. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So that is um, the food thing. I'm all over. Um, the, the, the clothes, like the, tidiness yeah. of the house I'm a person that I can survive in chaos like okay. I can actually operate in chaos mm-hmm. I can operate in clean I can operate in, but I know many people can't many people get really upset about like mess around but it doesn't bother me mm-hmm. so if it's clean or if it's if it's messy I'll be fine it doesn't matter. Way. me too but whoever I'm with every once in a while like, like my boyfriend he can't handle it as soon as we get back to home he has to clean up like the house if, if it's late and if we've been out like whatever he'll still clean up mm-hmm. I don't understand that but yeah. that's what he's like. Because <laughs> you need to wake up to clean. This is what I don't understand. Yeah. But anyway, so, so that side of things, no. Like the duties, like I would happily, if he if he says like you need to do your bit, I'll pay for a cleaner. Because I just okay. don't think it's worth yeah, my time. I would, it's just yeah. not worth my time. Like I, my time is better spent somewhere else. Mm-hmm. It will be clean and whatever, but upkeep, I'm mm-hmm. just not on. It's just ridiculous to me to spend your time doing yeah. that. Cooking, I'm here for. But I do feel that naturally, because we're maternal, when children get involved, we are yeah, naturally going to take on the pressure mm-hmm. of doing it. And if I just look at my own parents for that, like me living with my mom and my brother lives with my dad, the care my brother gets is then, to yeah. 1% yeah. in comparison to me. Mm-hmm. He's fine with that though. But like, even though my mum isn't looking after me per se, mm-hmm. just her in actual being, yeah. like it's just inbuilt in her that she'll ask me, have you eaten today? Like, do you do this, do that? And even if I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm good, I'm good, obviously I'm grown now, it's still a, a thing. Mm-hmm. Whereas for my dad, that uh, must just yeah, stop at like 10. <laughs> I understand why you still need to do that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like when I talk to my brother, I actually feel sorry for him. He's like, I what he's living in. Are you living like this? Literally. But that's what he wants. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I feel like maternally is inbuilt in us. If you're going to have children, totally. you're going to be like that. So, then you end up taking on triple shift. But it's the job of the woman to not. Like I said to my mum, you've got server mentality. She's got yeah. server mentality. Like, it's like, you need to understand people are always going to ask because it makes their life easier. Mm. You don't have to say yes. That's true. But mm. as women, I feel like a lot of the time, especially the elder generation, feel like they have to say yes. Mm. And they take on what they can't do. Then they're resentful and they complain about their life. Mm. You don't yeah. have to say yes. But it's not their fault. They were showed for their whole life they have to. Mm. So then they end up 
in this situation. They definitely do have mm. civilian mentality. I definitely grew up like because uh, my I'm from Congo. Mm. My parents went from there, and growing up, I've seen my mom like really work more than 40 hours mm-hmm. a week mm-hmm. c- come back clean the home make mm-hmm. sure we mm-hmm. got our homework done mm-hmm. the plate would be we would always have something f- like cooked from that day as well mm-hmm. and she did everything with as little as they had before mm-hmm. so I'm like with everything that we have today Literally. it should be that much more mm-hmm. easier Trust to do me, however yeah. we have like this well not issue but like we're it busy built. yeah I feel like I'm always busy and I never mm-hmm. have time for everything anything mm-hmm. I'm like sometimes like on my right to here, I was thinking about it. I was like, well, how did my mom do mm, everything? Literally. How the hell did she cope? Like, yeah, how, literally. Literally. how in the hell literally. did she manage to get everything totally. done? And she never missed a date on anything. She never mm. forgot a single mm. thing. And she had like wow. everything so put together. Mm. And I feel like today, I never have time for anything. Mm. Yeah. Right? When it should be like that much more easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I think so. But I feel like as we... For example, when you progress in your career and you start earning more and more money, Mm -hmm. you think, how did I used to survive on £100 a week? Mm. But when it's because your life changes. So although like you're busier now, it seems like you're busier now. Wait, although it seems like she was busy then, Mm -hmm. it's busy with different things. So you can, her her busy day will probably stop at six and then it's just kids and then it's just food. And then it's just bed. Yeah. Whereas our stuff now is all just one big blur, and there's no like cut off point. We're work, we're working into two or three o'clock in the morning now, That's and true. the days just go into what weeks, That's and which true. go into months, and then now we just don't know where to put our heads. Whereas we're before, working in different time it, it zones, was, exactly. So as before, it was way more structured. So they, it was easier to manage your day and manage mm-hmm. your time. I agree with that. I also think choice is a, is a part of it as well. Like there wasn't any choice. That, 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 that I mm. believe part of the reason so many women of that generation had true. kids yeah. and don't like their kids because <laughs> they don't want to have kids. They probably yeah, didn't want to have kids, that's but they had true. to. There yeah. wasn't a choice. It was like, well, okay, you have to get married, number one. You have to have kids, number two. And mm. that's it. So yeah. that's why you got so much postnatal depression, so many kids that feel like, I just, I'm not loved. Like, yeah. why? And it's because the mum didn't want, not in a horrible way, that's but she probably true. didn't want to have kids. And then, and or now. not ready. Yeah, not ready. Exactly. Mm. And now, is it because we have the option? This is something I think about a lot. I'm like, is all these things because we have the option to be upset about it or to speak out about it that we don't want to do it or that we even acknowledge that as triple shift or as like a lot of work that we have to do mm-hmm. before we just have to grin our teeth and be like, yeah, yeah, mm. it's Monday. <laughs> do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, totally. Yeah. And coming on my way, like I again, like I was just like thinking about yeah, it. A lot of thoughts at on first, your way here, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, because like I was thinking about my question and I was like okay absolutely not like I was more on the edge of like what Jade was saying Mm. like no you know like he picks up his stuff I pick up my stuff Mm. like we're both working nowadays Mm -hmm. usually and a lot of like I I'm good financially and everything so if another man comes into the situation Mm. I just feel like he should have to do his part of the 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 deal right Mm. but then I was when I was like going more into my thought process and I I I was thinking about my mom and everything I do like that side when you said like women have that maternal mm. instinct also don't you get like a sweeter satisfaction when you know that you did yeah, it all totally thinking about washing yeah. <laughs> I, I feel good about myself yeah. knowing that I did everything I feel like I, I have my possible. life yeah. together when I've done that when my room is like spick and span all my clothes are folded away I did exactly. some laundry like, everything's clean she I do feel like wow like, I got it together <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a once in a while thing. <laughs> but yeah, I do feel better when I for know sure. that I pulled everything out and I did all this effort for the person that, the person I love, my family, my yeah. family, you know, yeah. I, I feel yeah. like I would feel better. Yeah, yeah. And, and I feel like this brings it back to the love languages episode. Yeah, it's an you act can, of service, you isn't can, it? Yeah, so you can demonstrate things to me that will make me happier in other ways. Like, even if I'm like cleaning... I'm doing it, but if you're like, if I'm like, hand me that and you hand it to me without a grouch or without mm-hmm. anything, then I will feel like we're doing it together. Even though it's me yeah. doing it, I will feel like, oh, damn, we did that. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Damn, I need to date Kadisha, man. <laughs> <laughs> Trick her into thinking she's like, right? <laughs> we're both doing it. 50 50. So anyway, unfortunately, we have to wrap up. Because- yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, this is fun is though. Over. I'm so oh, glad. Nice. Yeah. Thank so you so much. It's fun. Um, if we're ever in Canada. Oh, yes. yes. And if you ever you come up. back, definitely come and see us again. I definitely it's will. It's been so fun. Thank you so much. You guys much. are more than invited in Montreal. Come through. Oh, I'll fun. see you next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're just talking about living in the moment and we're both yeah, moving out. Here we go. Gosh, you literally um, don't go back on your word because when I turn up on your doorstep. <laughs> Uh, where can people find you? What can they expect from you? Yeah, so um, you can find me on basically all the social media, media platforms. It's all Wakilongo Kipola. Now I know it's a little difficult to <laughs> spell out, but we'll write it we'll somewhere. We'll put it on yeah. the yeah. Yeah. And um, you can look up for, actually, we have a new podcast with the all girls that's building in Montreal as well. It's called oh, awesome. She Talk. So mm, you guys are definitely invited that. to come to, to that. Oh, yeah. What's yeah. some topics you guys talk about? Um, uh, little various topics, a little bit kind of like you did, but okay. the, like, the last episode yeah. we did was, um, would you rather like have a million dollars or... Uh, oh. Not be able to have kids. Oh, so. cool. I'm saving that. <laughs> I like yeah, these. I like no these. <laughs> like just yeah. various topics. Oh my yeah. God, that is. I was not expecting that for your first one. I thought like <laughs> boys. Oh. <laughs> You'd be surprised <laughs> at what came out of that conversation. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. that's a good um, is question. it available on all platforms? Yeah, available yeah. on all platforms. But it's okay. coming at the end of like uh, December. Okay, okay. okay. cool. Okay. We'll be sure to shout yeah, we'll out when you to us. Yeah, right. Cool. At the end of every episode, we do something called shout out. So just something you've Eaten, seen, tasted, been to, um, listen to, yeah, watch, listen to, watch, anything of the above. Just shout out, just to spread the word and just um, get free promo. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'll go first. My shout out this week is Crepton Conan Revenge is Sweet. Boy, I heard oh. about that. That Aww. album is something else. My favorite song on there, Salam. Okay. I'll right. listen to it. I'm going to listen to yeah. it. <laughs> My shout out this week is Love Island USA. Oh, gosh. oh no, I don't, I don't know about that. Have you watched it? Um, n- no. So why are you saying oh gosh? Because I, I watched one either, episode but... of an, of a foreign one and I was like, Australia. Oh, no, this Australia. Is just, oh, okay. Well, if it's anything like that. Then... No, this is, I, I can barely watch take Australia. the UK one. I was going to watch Australia, but I couldn't. I was like, I can't watch I think that. their accent was US as well. is actually popping. Really? Three episodes in and I'm like, I'm here. I, I would arguably say. Oh, it's better. I mean, oh, oh man, okay. we're always getting beaten by these damn Americans, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, but yeah. So my shout out is basically I was I was looking at I'm always looking for new podcasts and stuff, but there's a podcast by Hinge. It's called Ghost Stories. I find it so funny, and it's basically about people that have ghosted each other. So like, for example, I watched what I listened to like one episode and it was like this guy, this girl, like they went on like dates for like four months and then she just like ghosted. She just didn't message him again and that was it. And he was she like, I just him. don't, yeah. And she was like, he was like, I just don't understand why. And basically um, the presenters will talk to her, they'll talk to him and they put them in the room together and get them to discuss it. Mm-mm. And I just think like it's jokes. It's just really good. And it's interesting to hear like people's side of the story because sometimes, do you know what I mean, there is a, a legit reason why they ghosted or like, and sometimes the other person didn't realize, you know, why they were like, why they got ghosted on. Do you know what I mean? Something that they did, which was blaringly like, what the hell that they didn't even see. So yeah, I just find it really funny. I just think it's a good one. Okay. Hmm. Um, I'm gonna shout out. Well, do you guys listen to Sir here? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. So. You do. Um, his last album, Chasing Summer. I only know a couple of songs. I'm not gonna lie. Well, there's one song in particular. It's called um the recipe. Okay. Um, I'm gonna shout out that song in particular because it's been on the loop. For the oh. past like three, two weeks, t- three weeks to mm. when that album dropped. Um, and it's really putting me in perspective in my current relationship, non relationship mm. moment. Oh, girl. Okay. So is it, is it, is it, is it a singer? Okay. Okay. What? So is it a singer? Yeah, yeah it's a okay. singer. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I love music that can make you think like that. Okay. Yeah, it just makes you think about like. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like we are the wrong people today. Awesome. This is the first thing that came up. So, yeah. Cool. Guys, we have an announcement. <gasps> oh, Quick yeah, one. we do. How, yeah. how do I. I don't know. Yeah. I didn't know if we were even doing it. Oh my it. god! Yeah. Okay, okay. Right. We have an announcement. You would have already known by now, um, but we're going to tell you anyway. But we're going to tell you anyway. Yeah. Uh, we're having an event. Yes! Are you showing or you're not going to be here? When is it? December, December the eighth. Oh, we'll see. We never know. Maybe you can come oh, back. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So, Trident is having our first event. Yes. It is going to be a Christmas movie Elf. with. Sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, everybody yeah, loves the we're elf. We're watching Come on. Elf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's going to be also a, like a live discussion, mm-hmm. similar to our last Christmas episode, where we're just going to be discussing yeah. all things Christmas do's, don'ts, loves, hates, best gift, how worst cope. gift, how to <laughs> cope, best Christmas, all of that. Um, so get your tickets. Yeah. Um, link will be in our bios. It'll be a cute little goodie bag and included in the price as well. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you gotta sell it. Buy the ticket. There's a goodie bag, damn it. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, so all the details will be on our pages. And guys, we'd love to meet you all. And I'm sure that you'd love to meet us too. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And we're celebrating our first birthday. It's our first event. So come and help us celebrate and get into the festive season. And we love you. And have a good week. And buy a ticket. Yeah. And bring All a friend right. with a ticket. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds super fun. Yeah, yeah, and there's limited spaces, so make sure you get yours soon. Because yes. mm-hmm. I mean there's not many. DM yeah. any of us if you need more info, even though it should be there on all our pages. But yeah. still. All right. Thank you guys. Bye Have guys. a great weekend. Keep listening, keep subscribing, keep messaging, yes. all of that. <laughs> Bye.